I don't know if you folks want to be more specific as far as you know salvageable stuff. I clearly must have talked to you, Skip, because they've got the stones being salvaged. I have that in my draft. Okay. Yeah. And the idea there was to build a real stone wall around the flower bed on Elm Street. But when we went to do that, the stones we saved from the house on that lot were gone. So well, we used some other blasted rock and stuff. That's so that was the idea. Plus, there's some really nice big flat stones in the basement of 51. Question. The Sitco, yes. the Sitco station is way down the street. Do you mean Waterbury Service I Station? Just said that oh, I, sorry, I was reading that. <laughs> Another question for me? Sure. The capping and cutting of the existing sewer line and the, and the water line, my suggestion would be that, that be capped significantly, but not permanently with concrete and so forth, so that it could be connected back on if and when somebody goes in there. I think that's, when they say cap, it's an actual cap that you can remove be. that can be taken it's off. It's removable. Yep. There's a rubber band and a stainless steel clamp. Yep. Where the 
great in the news. I hope they will turn out. Up all the great in the news. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, is he still there? No, that we uh, <laughs> had uh, to The, uh, back when we were talking about this a few years ago, Kathleen Day had uh, two or three people that were interested in going in and removing, like, doors and the staircase and stuff that was kind of salvageable and stuff. Uh, and of course, one of the things that's kind of unique is a banister. Right, there's a banister would be certainly something somebody could reuse. I don't know if there's anything else. If you were to do that, you'd want to make sure she's got insurance to cover whoever has a boo boo. Sure. Uh, is there a couple people that come? Seems like it makes sense to have the contractor salvage all of the um, building materials, like the railing, uh, the timber frame, if they wanted those types of things. Maybe you've specified the, uh, you know, that we would take the stone. Maybe there just needs to be a list of things that we would want, and then everything else that that the contractor can salvage, they can salvage. So it might be good to have a make it a little clearer. It was clear about the stones, but uh, and the lights. Well, those are the only things I was. Okay. I think between so, Alec and Woody and myself. I mean, I think the door should be salvaged, but I don't have any. Yeah, the contractor would be the best one to do. So maybe it just needs well, to be a little clearer. Some so, contractors might, others might not. Yeah. You know, if it's like Myers Construction, they'd probably just come in and crunch it up and put it in a dumpster. Um, you know, without any thought to, I mean, uh, there should be miles of copper pipe in there, probably too, uh, running around the building, all those old heating system and stuff. Um, I just wasn't sure you mentioned, um, oh, the village, never mind. I misread it uh, regarding the permits, because I recall in the RFP, you had said that you already had a permit and stuff. The RFP aligns with what I thought. Zarrow permit was good for two years. You know, yeah, it runs out. out in some time at the end of August, right, Steve? Um, the demolition permit. I didn't think so. I can check on that. I thought it yeah. said the contractor, not the village. That's why. So I was saying, did you already do that versus requiring them to do it? That's um. So what? That's not renewable. You got to reapply again. Right, we can facilitate that, but we should anticipate that. I'll, I'll check from the phone. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else? Um. You know, as far as uh, just this thought occurs to me now, kind of in line with what <clears throat> Steve is saying, if the stone and the lights are the only thing the village wants, uh, maybe this first paragraph, the first sentence where it says, you know, the contractor is encouraged to reuse and, and salvage as much as the existing structure as possible. Maybe we should list some things that are salvageable that a contractor might be interested in. You know, that timber frame, timber frame. there's a lot of reasons, you know, old timbers in there. If, if somebody saw it and said, well, this building has these timber frames, this building has a staircase and a banister that we might want to salvage, it, it might be something that is attractive if we did a little bit better job of listing what's there. If we don't want it, that's fine. Yeah, just make it clear to the sale. I'm sure out. that's OK, too. But maybe we should uh, list a few of the items that somebody might be interested in sure. that would attract their interest. I agree. Think that makes sense? Um, sure, I don't have any problem with that. Okay. So maybe you can work with Woody a little bit? Sure, I'd be glad to. That's helpful. Yeah. There's also uh, the names of a couple of the people that were interested in salvaging stuff before. It, maybe it's of uh, 
I, I'm sure they'd be glad to look at it to let us know what things were salvageable in their mind that yeah. give us a better okay. idea. Yeah, we can. I can get you those. Okay. Because I've got them from Kathleen. Uh, okay, yeah, that'd be great. And then I, if you want that, we would craft some language, that's fine. Yeah. And then we can just say, uh, yeah, with the exception of, and then just list the items that we want. Right. Okay. okay. Great. And I think if we wanted to save those lanterns, we just take them out of the middle. Of yeah, the we've got a bunch of stuff to remove. Yeah. Right. Then, so. Okay. Um, so I guess then you'll we'll work on the recyclable part of this. Yeah. Okay. And then you want us to bring it back to you one last meeting? Um, or just send it out? You might could just be sent out. What, uh, what the time frame do you think you want it back? Give them three weeks or? Yeah, that's that sounds reasonable to me. Um, if we get, if you give Steve information about those folks about the salvage, it might be something we could ask them. How long is so while we plan to look at the first meeting in June. Okay. So. Yep. So you can show in the minutes we authorize to make necessary corrections regarding the. Recyclables and have uh, the RFPs back by so that we could look at them at the first meeting in June. Which, uh, that would be the 13th. 13th? And I was hoping not to have another second meeting in June. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Um, Next up is possible subdivision options with looking at the parking. Yep. So um, I had a conversation with Steve recently about this, and uh, we looked at uh, the site plan that Chris Parsons had put together, and um, Steve is going to, I think, you have, you have that one for right? Um, I, I do. I have uh, the file with their, with Chris Parsons' proposal as well. So uh, Parsons' proposal um, included, you know, retail, a restaurant, and uh, residential on the property. And the configuration that he had for the footprint of the building uh, basically used up all of the parking that was available. Was it 52 spaces? 52? That's correct, 52. So he had put 52 spaces in on that lot in addition to the to the uh, uh, proposed use of the building, and he needed all of those parking spaces in order to do what he required. Him. So I asked Steve to look at it uh, using the same building footprint, but uh, taking out you know some of the um, proposed uses. So I'll let him explain what he took out. I think there's two different variations here. Uh, where subdividing the parcel is possible and maybe some places for the municipality. So that's what I have to do. Okay, good. So um, I talked to Chris Parsons, by the way. I wanted to make sure that Chris was okay with us using the work that he had had done as part of his proposal. Did the 52 were the number that he estimated he needed from his Correct. proposal? So yeah. he was. I got the impression when we talked to him, he, he had more spaces than he needed. But. Well, I think what he said in the proposal was that he would be open to some shared use, some of those spaces, let's say in the evening, when our retail uh, portion of the building and the offices would not need the parking spaces. So I, I read the first part, and I, I've got this here, I can uh, yeah. no, take a okay. look at it. So uh, he did an analysis based on the square footage of the retail offices and uh, the restaurant, which uh, is a high demand for parking. 20 seats in the restaurant? Well, he, he had 22 uh, parking spaces, and it would be about um, roughly 40 um, seats. 40, well, 14 spaces, so that would translate to uh, 
three times 14 is going to be 42 seats. Okay. Is what uh, I would um, how I would apply this. So um, so I work on two scenarios. The um, the first one. Um, uses uh, more of the building, if you will, or has a, um, a more intense use of the building. I talked to Bill. Um, we thought the first step would be to um, pull out the restaurant use, uh, keep the amount of retail and office use that uh, Chris had proposed. Um, I figured eight uh, two-bedroom apartments, um, and uh, I was he had just square footage of residential use. So in order to come up with a scenario, I applied the number of apartments and uh, figuring it at roughly 1,000 square feet per, per apartment. So that corresponded to the uh, approximately 8,000 square feet of residential space that uh, Chris has in this design. So that. Um, that would result in a demand of 12 spaces, one and a half per apartment. So, so this scenario has the private parking need at 32 spaces. So I used his design, and since this scenario looks at subdividing the property, I used the design technique of creating some tree islands, and they're represented in green in this uh, markup of his plan. So the, the concept would be that there would be uh, some tree islands in the parking lot that would uh, delineate the difference between the private section of the parking lot and the public parking, and there could be trees, that type of thing, signage, that sort of thing. So this shows the parking, uh, or a, a subdivision line that would go through those uh, islands, and then there would be access just like um, this design for trays. I didn't try to redesign uh, anything for this exercise. It's a, it's a good design. It's pretty efficient. Um, one thing that I did do is I added some parallel spaces along the entry drive. Um, this entry drive, uh, I used some approximate scaling of this plan. Uh, and the survey of the parcel is, um, is also part of your packet. So if you, if you take the survey uh, scenario one, and put that side by side um, with this scenario will give you a little bit better idea of scale. So, um, so I added some parking spaces, um, and, um, and the reason for that is that he actually had, I counted 50 spaces in his design, um, and then the tree islands take out four spaces. So I added in six spaces along the entry drive just to give an adequate number of parking spaces. And I think that would work fine. Um, we obviously have par parallel parking along village streets, uh, parallel parking along uh, ample, amply, uh, ample width of elementary drives is fine. So, so that's scenario one. And then if you look at the survey, what I did, uh, and this is all approximate, just for discussion purposes, I um, approximated where a subdivision line would be just based on um, an approximate scaling of um, the, the municipal parking area, if you will, and the private parking area. Created a line, um, did a, some math on terms of width, uh, width and depth of that lot, came up with about 0.22 acres. Um, interestingly enough, if you look um, at the survey, <laughs> Right here, uh, behind the existing building where it says Village of Waterbury, it's uh, 0.877 acres to Centerline of Highway, and then 0.796, or about 0.8 acres, to highway right-of-way limits. So for the purposes of this exercise, I used the 0.8 uh, acres. Um, our zoning does not uh, allow us to um, incorporate highway rights of ways in lot area when a lot is less than an acre. So uh, so if you add the 0.22 and then um, the approximation of the private parcel of 0.57, that should uh, give you uh, about 0.79 acres, it's, which is actually more than what we, what we have in the grand list, which is 0.6, so that's good. Um, so did you have any questions on the first scenario? Um, 
we can go on and say, why don't I describe the second one and then sure. if you have questions or uh, need clarification. So scenario two, um, Bill and I thought it would be a good idea to, to give you a couple different scenarios and this may help um, in future proposals that uh, I know Zeb Allen was here. Um, I haven't talked to Zeb lately, but you know he may have some ideas. So um, this scenario, um, two has a breakdown on um, size of retail office space, um, exclusive office space. And uh, I decided to get creative to try to maximize the amount of public parking. We have a bylaw now that, um, that you, the trustees approved that um, allows one bedroom apartments to have a lower parking requirement. If you remember with Dan Johnson's proposal, yes. this was part of the scenario. So we amended the zoning. So uh, I looked at a scenario with four two-bedroom apartments. Um, so that would be a requirement of six parking spaces and then four one-bedroom apartments, which would be four spaces. So the total private uh, parking requirement would be 26 spaces. And um, with the addition of some more parallel spaces along the entry drive that you'll see in this uh, sketch, uh, there's actually, I think, um, 10 spaces along the drive that are parallel that would allow approximately 30 uh, parking spaces. Keep in mind this is a uh, not exactly the scale plan, so these are approximations, but I think they're good just to talk uh, conceptually. So um, in this scenario, uh, you'll see there's some reduction in the amount of office space, about 1,200 foot reduction in the office space that could go into residential. I don't know if this, again, is a um, conceptual plan for a, a building. So um, that, that's how I chose to look at a, a scenario that would give more public parking. So in scenario two, then uh, Chris Parsons could do everything he planned to do. Is that correct? Well, yeah, permits for but no, this is not the rest of them. Well, the rest of it goes away with both of them, right? Right, right. right. What I did, um, what I did skip with scenario one is that I uh, moved the um, square footage for the restaurant to. Uh, I added that to the office space. So scenario one uses all of the space, floor space, in uh, Chris's design, but it takes out the restaurant. Does that make sense? So it just changes the use of the restaurant space to office space. And um, <clears throat> since restaurants are very intense use uh, for parking, and, and that would, um, according to my scheme, would, would uh, allow for 20 parking spaces for the municipal site. So if we wanted to, we could offer some RFPs for the lot at the reduced size and keep the either 30 or 26 spaces or whatever. Yeah, or, or even, is, so. yeah, say here's a couple options. Uh, give us a proposal uh, using some of these options as a starting place. So the only question I have, uh, and thank you, Steve, for doing this, it's helpful. On, on the survey map for scenario one, right. you have the private parcel is 0.57 acres and it's 0.22 acres for the municipal, and that, right. that comes up to 0.79. But right. in scenario two, both yep. of them go up. I've got a mistake. I'm sorry. I, it should be 0.5. Um, it should be. So it's going to be down plus 0.5. It has to come down. Right. So the private parcel would be 0.5. I made a mistake in my addition in my case. Or a little bit less than, you know, it would be like 0.49. Right. I, I just didn't understand so. how both could go up. No, I made so that mistake. So the private parcel in scenario two should be 0.68. Right. Be 0.49. Yeah, the 0.3 is correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you mark your plan, the private parcel would be point four nine. I'll check my I'll correct my original. That was a good catch. I was going to mention it. What um, with that design there, how uh, easy is snow removal? Well, many parking lots have islands in them, uh, including the this parking lot. I have more 
you know, if you kept this part, is there room enough for, they don't have to cart the snow off? No, I think there's plenty of room, Skip. Um, this scheme actually has a nice lawn uh, buffer, if you will, around the entire parking lot. So it wouldn't be difficult to push snow across to the sides of, of this parking lot and the back. It could be pushed into all of the peripheral areas. You know, obviously you have lighting, uh, just like we have with this lot landscaping, but I think there's plenty of space here to uh, facilitate snow removal. Did Chris's design anticipate recovering our property next to Albert's that's on the other side of that chain link fence as? That's a good question. It's, it's a difficult. I asked Chris if his consultant did basically a plan view on the survey that would make it easier to figure all that out, and he didn't. You can see it's kind of hidden behind the building. Um, I think it's just green space. Well, I, I, I take that back. He, this, uh, okay, the best thing to do is take a look at this plan, and I think um, it doesn't go, okay, the, the rear portion of the building, which is where the carriage bar is now, that was the police station, um, it shows here, this is probably the first floor plan, it's probably the easiest. So here's Ann's house. I didn't pass this around to the, um, to you or other members of the audience, you know, but uh, this is from his original proposal. So if you compare this to the survey, um, this building has a much bigger footprint than the existing carriage barn to add all that space. Um, and there's probably, that's probably about 15 feet from that building to the property line right there. So it does take advantage of the additional space in that area. Is that, was that, does that answer your question? Is that what you're thinking about? Yeah. Um, um, that his scheme he, works. He, he shows it going straight back. So obviously, well, they're not. It does. Well, if look at the survey. Right. It does. It does. There, the fence jigs and jogs, but the fence is not on the property line. Right. Yeah. So, so we're, we're on the same page there, it sounds like. Did you want to look at this? Well, you're familiar with this. Good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right, good. Okay. I think from the oh. uh, The Elm Street lot, um, is that 16 or 18? I, I didn't have time to go look at that, Skip. I've been really busy and I didn't get out to look at that. Something in that ballpark. I think it's uh, smaller than 0 0.22 acres because we use up every, <laughs> every <laughs> square inch. foot of that. Well, not, not right. Right. there's the picnic table and the there's a little, bench. There's a little, little bit behind the lot between that and the bank lines up there. There's a little bit, not a whole lot. No, that's there's this there's island, that island area is split between the bank and our property, I think. Yeah. I was wondering at what, if we do this, offer this to the town so that we got money from selling this and selling this to the town that they could develop as parking. I was uh, mm -hmm. wondering what sort of a value they have on it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, something Dan Sweet might be willing to look at. I don't, I don't know. Um, we could certainly look at land values at point three acre or 0.22 acre lots in the village um, for other properties and get a sense of, of how much they're worth. Would you look, when we did Elm Street, we paid 98,000 or something? Oh, man, I don't remember exactly, but uh, the whole thing was for 200,000. Right, that comes to develop it. If those are so there's two separate lots. So we have to acquire the right of way for the town lot. Well, we would right. yeah. sell it with the right of way over. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But so the, but that I'm saying, of course, would affect him if we could reconfigure it with something different. Right. And anyway. with this, I mean, that we really have to think through that. But yeah, I think it's a good point. Um, what we would do is probably have to hire, um, I would suggest we work with Grandier Engineering and come up with a subdivision plan. We would need to get a zoning permit 
to subdivide it. I believe it would be a, an administrative permit. But um, especially with, one, with this scheme, um, you're basically looking for a broad access uh, to this lot that would include all these aisles. So the, the easement is going to have to somehow uh, encompass um, these circulation areas so that the public would have full access. Because this really, this scheme is a good scheme, but it, it's uh, using two access points to the rear lot. I, I feel that makes sense. Uh, it's a good it's a good layout. There are probably other ways you could lay this out, but they may not be as efficient. Yeah. So the zoning process is something that I can <coughs> I can look, excuse me look at with Bill, and we we certainly could consult with Granier Engineering and see how they would recommend that way be handled. On that, Steve, is there implications of the smaller lot in terms of percentage of building coverage with that? increases by virtue of part of it. That well, not in this zoning district. This is in the downtown commercial zoning district. And we have um, no minimum lot coverage. You can essentially cover the whole lot with the building. Is the concerns I had heard was in flood regulations versus, I think, well, coverage. Sure. That, that's going to have to come to play with a proposal for the building. You're right. Right. So How that might. Yeah, you might have to have some vetted crawl space or something under the building to deal with the whole no net rise issue. But that, that, that's a, another, whole other engineering aspect that a private uh, applicant would, or developer would have to propose. Elm Street Mill just found the information. It was 18 spaces and purchase price was 95. And I think we paid 93. It was authorized at 95. Huh. Down a little bit, it says 93. 93, 511. And then 85,000 to demolish the structure and construct it. So. Mm -hmm. so the total cost was 224,000 for 18 spaces. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, this would be somewhat more than that. Um, but the lot might be a similar value. I don't, I don't know if that's something. We could probably find out right, some estimate of it. Didn't say how big the lot was. Oh, I didn't write this down. It's oh, like, pretty small. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I'm sure it's on there somewhere, but I, I just didn't put it in there. No. Of course, if we were to do this, the intent would be sell this to the town so we just it's up to them to go build whatever they were going to build sure but, um, you know kind of talk with them that they were interested in stuff and set up the legal matters that if we're selling this we kept what you need to, to access that as public spaces and stuff. yeah i think if we're going to explore that, I would suggest we really go beyond what I've done. Oh, yeah. You know, take the survey and do a really careful layout of a, of a uh, potential parking lot with some space for screening around it and then come up with a good, um, good line. Because it looks like if Chris Parsons needed all 52, the only parking you get out of it was sort of after hours right that he would needs not, it all to get his right place. his scenario would not um, facilitate a subdivision right with right. Right. And, you know we, we I mean Steve talked to him about is it okay to use the plan to do some you know estimating and some planning but I, I you probably didn't talk to him about are you willing to give up the rest no, 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 that's not my, that's yeah. not my role, no, so no, I, I, I know that. Didn't go there, right? No, but that's a possibility to sit down with him and do some negotiation. And you know, it would certainly be up to him. Yeah. You know, I'm sure he's done some analysis to know what he needs in terms of rent and everything else to make the thing work, so. You know, when I would expect there's uh, a bigger demand for parking during Main Street reconstruction. Than, you know, you might well 
the 50 or 75 spaces during Main Street reconstruction mm -hmm. after the loss of all the parking on Main Street and the people who want to Hopefully that many people will come downtown when it's under construction. <laughs> That's going to be the big question mark. Yeah. I, I think with Chris's original proposal, he wasn't uh, sure how many seats he would be looking at for the rest of anyway. I don't think he had a firm view, even when he talked to us about where that would be sure. in you know, number of tables or whatever. Yep. Just kind of generalized it when he talked about it. So even though the village will be going away, we hope, by July 1st, this will remain an asset of the new utility district, so you don't get off the hook of being able to <laughs> Well, I, I think this definitely kind of provides us some options to you know, kind of help the parking situation and maybe uh, maximize the amount the village can get out of the lot kind of from the villages or former utility I mean, utility districts perspective and mm -hmm. um, you know and nina there is still looking at options she wants to get in there on friday with chris uh chris yeah. general so she was gonna give you a call but you had a key they're part of all of their things. So even the public parking may be easier fit with what, you know, she wanted to reuse the existing building, not the expanded one. Right, Ted mentioned that when he was here, that, um, yeah, I think they're looking at a little more low-key development, and, and at some point it might be worth sharing some ideas with them about that, and I'd be glad to be part of the discussion. You know, whether that's feasible or not, I have no idea what it would to renovate that building to put it back into use. We know what, um, you know, the guys, the yeah. estimate for the insurance. But right. Well, I think that's why Chris wants to get into the building yes. and see what would be involved to bring it up to code and see what maybe needs to be demolished and what could be salvaged. Sure. Yeah. Have you heard anybody else kind of interested in it? You no, I was going to say Nina called me this morning, so I was curious to hear from you all. Um, what did you think? Nina. Oh, she did. Um, so I can give her info on the um, historic tax credits, which potentially can pay yeah, for she asked like me today, but I Code updates and the like. I didn't know where you all were going in terms of this meeting, so I said I would get back to her in the morning. Everything. Perfect. So we, I'll follow up with her. Since Nina will be using the public access kind of thing, she has to uh, have all the standards that we would have had to do for the municipal office have to meet those same standards for electricity. For code. code yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's what Chris will look at. If it's a commercial mm -hmm. building, it has to meet all the uh, proper building codes. Correct. And ADA so access and so on. Do everything we would have had to do. Oh, yeah. To Absolutely. And just to follow up with Skip, I haven't heard from anyone else. I haven't talked to anyone else because it felt like you all were moving forward. If I think there's folks who have we're resoliciting proposals, I can certainly, you know, say we're now looking at subdivision proposals if you're still interested. Um, I just have not done that as of now. I think what I would suggest, um, I, I wouldn't be comfortable sharing Chris's um, design with, with others, but we certainly could share, um, we could certainly could share the surveys and we could say, um, here's here's an approximation with my correction of uh, or Bill the one the correction Bill highlighted. We, you know we could say well here's a survey and here's what the municipality might be interested in. This would yield approximately 20 spaces for us. This would yield approximately 30, and that would give them some parameters on the, the remaining space to to look at. So if, if this is the direction you want to go and you want to give Bill and me some direction, and, you know, working with Zev and any others that are, are looking at the property, this is, these are the, right. sort of this is what I would show. Okay. I would be interested in knowing what 
we thought was a value for the 0.3 or the 0.25 acres if it was to be parked in. Maybe uh, mention it to the select board is this, you know, the value, is it something they're interested in pursuing? And, yep. You know, so you have all the options kind sure. of. I'm sure when we join the three water commissioners, there will be some other opinions. <laughs> Bob is never one to, you know. Not bashful. He's always, yeah, he always is, comes up with some creative uh, ideas, so to speak. He's gone until June, isn't he? Yep. Well, I think this okay. is helpful. Helpful. Do you know what I do? Good. Especially with that. All right. We're going to try to get some stuff we can put from Dan about yeah, no, you know, just look at some comparable. And uh, having a real cost for, you know, destruction. Right. Taking it off to, you know, where we are. Kind of. Yep. We'll compare. Compare proposals. And, you know, I certainly, you know, if we want to do something else, Chris Parson would have to amend what he would do with Yeah, if you're going this direction, it would definitely, you know, affect what he's willing to offer for the property and every direction. So, good. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, you're real. Thanks, Steve. I'm going to hang out, uh, hang around for your next discussion. I can just sit right here. Yep, for the start. Um, just for me. Next item was discussion on briefing of the select board on the expansion of the historic district. Um, the thoughts have changed as of today. I did meet with Scott to kind of over some of the properties on the list that he had uh, was working on, sort of the history. And I mentioned we were possibly looking at him to come to a select board meeting in the first meeting in June, and he said he's away. Oh, no kidding. Okay. So he could come the second meeting. Okay. Um, but he couldn't make the first. And my thought was the to second select board meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which would be the third Monday. Yeah. Yeah. He would. He could do that. Um, and my thought was to have him do something like he did for the trustees here at our last meeting maybe an abbreviated one. I don't know if they want to give up an hour. Um, but also to give the select word the process, you know, that needed to go through. The time table and whatnot. My understanding was this letter needed to go out or the notice sometime in June, is that? I believe so. I need to revisit that. We can, um, we can draft a letter. It may need to go out before then, so yeah. we, we'll, I'll look at that with Bill. And, so the thought was the process, that the letter would go out while the trustees were still in existence to let the board know, the select board know what was going on so they could see that, that after the first, it was, you know, there was the board of authority there kind of going forward. So, um, so not having Scott come till the 18th, I don't okay. know if it's worth having the letter and showing it to the select board at their first meeting and explaining the schedule, but then Scott could come and show the... Well, you'll have to find out first when the letter happens. Yeah, let me get that schedule. Yeah, that, I don't you can't miss that, definitely. Right. But whether it's before or after, it probably would be a good idea probably to explain to the select board at their first meeting, the letter has gone out, here's what we're doing, and then at your next meeting, Scott can come in. And I think. You know, I'm not stepping too far out to speak for them, but I think that was a, a good presentation that I did. It gives a good perspective on the purpose, why you're trying to do this. So I would hope that they could spare an hour of time. So I guess I would, I mean, your suggestion is to kind of brief them at the first meeting on the process and the letter. I don't know if that has to be a joint meeting or I could go or Two of us could go. Yeah, I mean, it could be a joint meeting. It, yeah, if more than one of you are going to come, it needs to be a joint meeting. Yeah. Uh, you certainly could do it alone if you wanted to. I mean, uh, well, Steve would 
Yeah, well, okay. yeah, but I mean, it doesn't take the whole board. So if right. I'm not uninvited to us, but I'm not trying to call and join people. You know, that's a pretty simple thing. So, so think, that would be the plan then? Yeah, so that would be the fourth. Four. Four. Right. And then they'll be again on the 21st and then have the fourth. So, yeah, I think, I think we can plan on And doing it in two parts saves you know the second meeting maybe only half an hour to let yeah, just, just focus, on, focus on just the presentation. the presentation and doesn't have to do with the yeah. process yeah so. sounds like a good plan okay no, i think that's good okay great you get that denise um, um <laughs> sure <laughs> i'll put something in all right i can then we're gonna Join brief the uh, select board at the first meeting on june 4th and ask scott newman to make a presentation to him at the second meeting. Yep, sounds like a good game plan. Yep, and I'll look up the schedule and work with Bill on the letter and have a draft by the fourth. Good. Or by the deadline. Yeah, I have to check it. Okay. Yep. Um, next up was update on the charter change that uh, it's passed the House and gone to the Senate. I looked online here today, and it's been read in the, in the Senate and gone to the uh, Rules Committee in the Senate, but they haven't taken anything on it. So. I, from what I understand, it's kind of a formality to go to the Rules Senate to just say that they're going to waive it from having to go through the whole committee process, and everything else is my guess. But. And it's. Uh, all acceptable to us in terms of what it did. They did some clarification of the purpose of the district, but we keep all the assets and there isn't any restrictions other than the normal state restrictions on what you can do. And we can acquire property and maintain property. You just can't use water and sewer money to do it. So we would have the option of enacting a tax if necessary if there were not other funds to do it so yeah. yeah i think it gives the village everything that the village is hoping to get out of the church you know any more than that ever mm -hmm. um then i put on here planning for the closure of the village government and opening the district that uh what things you thought we needed to do with things? Uh, well, is there a closure of accounts or changing the names or? Yeah. We're yeah. gonna have to take new oaths and everything and appoint a village, I mean a district clerk and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I've got to check with Paul Giuliani. I'm, I think it would be cleaner if we end up having a new employer identification number from the IRS. You know, we used to have one for the water department and one for the village. We consolidated that. It's one now for both entities. But because we're changing the name and because the purposes of the district are not only defined, it's probably a good idea to do that. Um, that's some, I don't, it, it may require some resolution from the board, but I, I'm not sure of that yet. Um, I'm in the process now. I think I told, I know I told the select board, I think I told you folks that uh, Bill Yacaroni has moved on from doing municipal audits. So I'm in the process now of trying to hire an auditor to audit the 2017 books that closed on December 31st. Usually, Yakimoni doesn't start until June anyway, and neither the town nor the village uh, received enough federal grant money in 2017 to require a uh, single audit. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about a deadline of September 30th to have everything done. So um, I think what I'll probably do is work with whoever the auditor is that we end up with to do the 2017 books for the village, which would include the water and sewer, and then also 
if possible, audit the general fund of the village as of June 30th. The water and sewer will continue on through the end of the year. We, we've adopted, the water and sewer commission has adopted budgets for the entire calendar year for water and sewer, so there's no need necessarily to audit those accounts except for how they interface with the village. But other than that, um, you know, we probably have to get new signature cards for all the banks and the, you know, the portfolios and things like that. But uh, that's pretty much just administrative work. I don't think there's any, there's no employees except water and sewer employees. But in Carla, is she the, she's the village treasurer and clerk now? Yeah. Yeah. So we so would need to appoint her as. Have to appoint the village treasurer, I mean the utility district treasurer and clerk, yeah. And then sign you, our forms would all have to be. Right. You and do yeah. that. You didn't have to do the most in the whole night there. But I think it's pretty much just administrative details. Um, and, you know, like every, and, and when I talk with the auditors, it, you know, they may, as I think about it now, they may say, well, let's not be in a hurry to audit the general fund of the village because there will be some, there's always some carryover. You know, there won't be as much as there is in a normal year from December to January where you're going to pay electric bills and things like that. But there may be some things that, like, you know, unemployment insurance that we're still, we just had our 2017 audit for unemployment insurance, which would include the police department, and that may or may not be uh, closed out by June 30th. So there may be some things that roll forward that, you know, would have to be, uh, they might just say, let's wait until the end of the year to audit the, the last six months of the building. Anyway, but I'll work on that. So Checking accounts and savings accounts, they get a new name, but keep the same numbers or not? Yeah, well, we'll work with the banks on that to see what they want to do. Um, you know, it will be, all of the money, as you know, is in one checking account that's in the village's name. Uh, so we'll have to get it in the utility district's name. And if we have a new EIM, they might just give us whole new numbers, which may mean there's some expenses to buy new checks and things like that. Um, uh, we may be, I'll check with Carla and Cameron about that. They may be already thinking about that anyway because you know, it's we'll have a new name. So. But I don't think it will be a huge undertaking. I don't think it will cause any problems except for a little bit more work for me and my staff a little bit. Good. Had a question, Eric? And when I spoke with them, I'll be so I will Are you hearing a massive crowd or is it not going to make much difference? But, uh, You're on. Anyway, when I sold Eagle Oil Company, and I'm a little familiar with what you're talking about, when I sold Eagle Oil Company to Johnson & Dix Fuel Company, and then I bought it back from them, and I went through two changes, transitions of names, and that property became Coffee Commercial Properties. Uh, there was a matter of the checking accounts, all the forms, W-9s, whatever, whatever, and it, it, it does take a little, a little longer than you might think working with your banks, and I had two different banks I was working with at the time. So it's, it's been easy, perhaps an easy job, but it's time consuming, at least it was for me. Yeah, it's going to take some time, I and mean, it's you know, going to take a little bit of effort, and you're right, nothing ever goes as quickly or as smoothly as you think, but... We want to have a good attorney and a good accountant, and that's what we'll make it pass it. Yep. So after uh, July 1st, then we would decide when our first meeting of the water commissioners and sewer utility commissioners would be. Yeah. It might be helpful for the actor 
maybe your last water commissioner's meeting, since that's really kind of a board that's going to be yeah. going forward that you establish a date that you're going to meet at that meeting, and then, you know, Natalie and Lefty can, on July, whatever, 13th or whatever, yeah. you choose. And that way, we'll be able to warn it and stuff like that. And you'll have to, uh, just like every first meeting, you'll have to reorganize the board and elect the chairperson and all that kind of stuff, you know, because you won't have a village president anymore like right. you do now that's elected directly by the people. So. Yeah. You probably have to change some stuff over with FEMA, too, won't you? Uh, well, I'm not sure, Everett, uh, the, um, as far as the emergency management plans and things like that, the, the town will be the responsible entity. Um, the village will, I mean, the utility district will probably have to have a specific plan for if there's, excuse me, damages to the water sewer uh, systems, but you won't have to have a general FEMA exposure like you do now. So, but. We'll, we'll work all that out. I mean, they just adopted the new emergency operation plan just because the timing said we had to do it, even though the village is only going to be here for a couple more months from the time they did that. But that's a good point. Thank you. OK. Um, I put on here the next meeting. I was hoping we didn't need another meeting in May. but. Anything coming up that you would? Well, would you want this? RFP? We were going to do it at the June meeting, the first June meeting. Okay. Right. Right. That's right. Um, yeah, there's nothing that I know that we would need another meeting. Um, it is. There's five Wednesdays in May, though, so it's going to be one, two, three. It's five weeks before you meet uh, in June. Yeah, if you keep it on the 13th, I don't know if you prefer to move it up to the first week of June. I have May since then. Okay. I don't, okay. Well, I don't, there's no, if we need a meeting, you can always still call a special meeting if you have to have it. So yeah. why don't we just plan on the 13th? And if something comes up that we have to meet, I'll let you know. Okay. Good deal. All right. Uh, minutes? decision for Hubex, which you, you got the motion. I move to find that general public knowledge of the details of pending lit litigation involving the village of Waterbury would clearly place the village at a substantial disadvantage. I second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. I move I move to enter an executive session to consider pending litigation involving a personnel issue and related confidential attorney-client communications made for the purpose of providing legal advice to the village. I second that. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. You want to 